Good evening. The power of persuasion. Some people just seem to have it. They're able to use what they have to get what they want. How do they do it? Is it something they're born with or something any one of us can learn? We decided to find out what it is that gives some people that special edge, that power of persuasion. And a little later tonight, you'll be able to vote online and tell us what you think works best. But first, here's Dennis Murphy. Do you ever feel like you need to wear a helmet and pads just to get through a busy day? And wouldn't it be nice to know how to get some little treats for yourself now and then to smooth out all the rough edges of life? Someone's going to get that good table at the restaurant. Why not you? How about sold out tickets when you want them? Or maybe nailing the rock bottom price for something? Just what is the X factor of persuasive powers that helps you get what you want? It is who you are, what aura you present, but it's also what you say and do in making your request. Dr. Robert Cialdini, a psychology professor at Arizona State University, has spent years studying and writing about persuasion. It's a skill that can be learned, can be cultivated, and in fact, if you understand the principles of influence, you can become significantly more effective in asking for whatever you want in our society. Persuasion is a learnable skill that reaches far beyond the row of self-help books. Corporations, charities, negotiators all want to master the secrets. And funnily enough, through his research, Dr. Cialdini has found a little twofer. Not only can you get what you want, but if you play your cards right, the other person helping you feels good about themselves too. Oh, that's so nice, thank you. And so with Dr. Cialdini's help, Dateline set out to find what factors affect our ability to get what we want. I heard your story is a really good story. Starting off, everything else equal, the people who are physically attractive have an edge. This is great, great headshots. So we hired model Dawn Basham. This map provides a common process. And model actor Neil Bonin. Uh, looks are, are very important. Studies find that age can be a plus too. We are also willing to be sympathetic to people who uh, are elderly or have a sympathetic appearance about them. We found Trudy Weissman, a woman in her 70s. The age is a source of respect. And tenacity, willpower is an important trait. For that, we turn to attorney Adam Lightman Bailey. If you can persuade a judge, an adversary, does that make you more successful at getting what you want in everyday life? My belief in my life is that there's nothing I can't get. If you want to be successful, always include one word, because. We showed psychologist Dr. Cialdini what we taped in our unscientific demonstration to see how it measured up against the scientific body of knowledge. I'm an actor, and I got a job on the line, and I'm like, I need a quarter, I gotta make a phone call. I need a quarter because, so the because word is very important. It's always something that augments your success. Always give a reason, you'll be more successful. It's not just saying because that people respond to, but something else. We like the people who are attractive, who are good looking, and we give them deference. We're more likely to succumb to their requests. But if you don't look like Neil and Dawn, don't call the plastic surgeon, because there are factors besides beauty. Studies show that just dressing well can sometimes tip the scales in your favor. It worked for Adam. I'll give you a quarter. You're awesome. You're in a suit for Christ's sakes. Bingo, and there comes the quarter. Now she said because you're well dressed in effect. He's not uh, a model, so he wore a suit and a tie. And research shows, for example, that people follow the directions of those they see who have standing and status. And a suit and tie is one indication of that. So when it came to getting change, everyone did pretty well, with Dawn coming out slightly ahead. While at the hotel, we also asked for something else, help from the concierge for the near impossible. Tickets to Saturday night's performance of the sold out Broadway show, Lion King. Is Damon Alfonsetti here? Again, Adam has done some research, I'm finding a, out the name of the concierge, I'm Adam and then paying him a I'm compliment. A, so what I was told was that you were the best in the business. He said, I've heard that you're the best, 
that if I ask you, there won't even be a problem because you have such great connections and so on. Does that open the door a little bit or wide open? Wide open for two reasons. Not only is it a compliment, it's a special kind of compliment. It gives this concierge a reputation to live up to. Now, is it cynically transparent or does it work? It seemed to work because we are tremendous suckers for, for flattery and compliments are the only information that, are just, that is just effective when it false as when it's true. <laughs> then male model Neil takes a different tact. Remember, Neil was pessimistic about his chances here. I think it's tough, particularly in New York, uh, because New Yorkers are so used to standing in line. He starts at the back of the line. Stepping outside the line and using Dateline's money becomes a walking ATM machine, doling out singles. Miss, I'm in a real hurry. Can I give you a dollar just to go to the front of the line? This will help defray your postage. I'm just going to jump in the front of the line. I'm in a real hurry. What's going on with the Neil taper? Two things. First of all, giving people something and, and asking for something in return, a space in line. So he gave them something. With a sense of good cheer. With a sense of good cheer and surprising them with it. That is, he went right down the line. He didn't wait for them to answer him. He just gave them a, a dollar. Thank you very much. Looking for that extra something to make life easy, do you have to be unwavering, relentless? So you look at these tasks that we set for these people and you realize they came through when they told a little lie. They kind of spun the truth or came up with a version of the truth. Right. Do you have to lie to get what you want? No. You don't. Uh, Most of us great. don't want to lie, and we don't have to. Dr. Cialdini says use your personality. Do what comes naturally to you. Just kick it up a notch. You can give genuine reasons. You can find genuine similarities. You can give uh, people genuine compliments and so on. That's the way to do this, to find those things that are already there in the situation and just raise them to the surface. Are you saying that? Yes. That means that you are an honest guy.